What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steve Runner here and welcome back to another video. Today is a little experiment. Today we're seeing how much fitness I've lost because I've had a week off running. Good morning and welcome back to another video. An interesting one today, a question that I know a lot of runners ask is how much fitness will I lose if I have a week off? Now obviously time off depends on injury, holiday, sickness, all of that stuff. I'm specifically talking about a week and I'm going to go into more information shortly. I'm going to give you guys the idea of this video um, and how I'm going to be measuring progress or loss of fitness and that sort of stuff. This will be the least scientific video you ever see on this topic because we're going to be measuring this by pace and heart rate. Let me get you out of the sun there. It's a little bit easier. In fact, let's keep walking around the corner here. So what is the purpose of today? Well, I'm out here today doing my usual morning sub-threshold workout, which is five by six minutes with one minute recovery. I've been doing this for the last six weeks. This is the seventh week I've been doing it, but last week I had it off. I was struck down with a back injury. I was on heavy painkillers and I wasn't able to even barely move from Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, the previous week. Things got better over time and I tested it out with a Saturday easy run of 40 minutes. Had a Sunday rest, a Monday easy run of 60 minutes. <clears throat> I was meant to get out yesterday, which is Tuesday circumstances changed so I'll now be running Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week but I've had another day off and now we are here today on Wednesday doing this double threshold workout the one that I usually do in the morning as I said we're going to be measuring this on pace and heart rate which ideally we'd be doing it by lactate but we have to go by pace and heart rate so I'm going to throw out a couple of variables here that are going to make a difference to this run today. The heat is one thing. It is hot today. It is really hot. In fact, the hottest that uh, I have run in doing any of these workouts. We have a kind of a mini heat wave at the moment here in the UK, which is going to last three days, which is standard UK heat wave weather. We never get it for a long period of time. So it is hot. I'm sweating buckets. So number two, my back is pain-free and it's good, but there's still a little bit of stiffness there. So I do find a little bit of mobility, not issues, but I feel like that might hinder me a little bit today. So a couple of things I'm looking out for. Number one, is my pace going to be similar to what it has been previously? And in relation to that, how is my heart rate going to be? Normally, my paces started off when I was doing this workout around the 550s per mile. I worked it down to the 540s for the same effort, feeling good doing it. And that's what this morning's workout is all about and has been throughout this previous block, feeling good doing this workout. I'm going to see if I'm going to be going back into the 550s, if I'm going into the 6s, whatever it might be, we'll see. And then, of course, in relation to that, what the heart rate is per rep. And we'll compare it to a couple of the previous, when I'd say I was in peak shape, uh, previous run. So without further ado, I'm going to crack on with some drills and strides, try and loosen up this back a little bit and uh, we'll get rocking and rolling. already <laughs> I put the warm-up on the workout and uh, I started my first rep in the warm-up <laughs> so it got to six minutes and uh, it didn't beep I was like what and I realized I said warm-up but I checked the first mile split was 546 uh, so that's cool it's gonna run to seven minutes on the watch which is obviously six of the rep one for the recovery and hit the lap button <laughs> and uh, yeah roll into number two. Solid paces so far. I thought I'd be slower, but uh, 
I guarantee you the heart rate through the roof it is so so hot <laughs> it's crazy but feeling smooth so I can't complain Three, 552, still decent, quite surprised to be honest that the paces are as good as they are, but uh, and it feels like it's flowing nicely and I can't see my heart rate and I refuse to look at it so I've got the interval screen on but uh, I suspect it's rather high. So rep number four, holding strong. That was quite comfortable, that one, which is good. But this last one is uh, one, three and five, uh, gently up, two and four, gently down. So we get this one done and we can analyze it all. So solid, overall done and dusted. I'm going to give you one stat just to make you realise how much different it was this morning. Heart rate, overall heart rate. We'll go through the details shortly. I haven't looked at the individual laps, but uh, average heart rate 166. Now, normally with these sessions, I do them 161, 162. And when I started, the very first one I ever did was 165. So this is the highest heart rate I've ever had. Now, I'm going to take into consideration the heat here. It is blooming hot. Max heart rate 178. Uh, again, I think the highest I've ever had on a max on this particular th session is 173. So heart rate is definitely higher, but pace is good. And to be honest with you, heart rate is such a difficult metric to use because there's so many factors, whether I'm a bit run down, a bit poorly, it's hot. Lactate is the ideal measurement in this situation. I just made sure throughout the whole way that I kept controlled and felt good conversational, not conversational, but string a few words together, but not have a full-on conversation. I was making sure I was kind of talking to myself on the way, stringing a few words, going, yeah, this is this is exactly the right area that I need to be in. So, uh, paces, brilliant, cannot grumble with that at all. A little bit slower than what they used to be, but for coming back after a week off and having not done this session for like two weeks, decent heart rate. Let's go analyze. So there we go, workout complete, and I'm actually now sat in the car ready to rock and roll for the second workout of the day. So double threshold to back. I wanted to see how the back held up this morning, held up really, really well. I'm gonna throw some data on screen now because we're talking about fitness, how much I've lost, uh, and use heart rate as an example. It really is quite funny since I've collected the data uh, for this video. Actually, I don't think heart rate is actually well yeah let's 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 dive into it i think weather plays more of a factor and obviously heart rate there's a lot of variables the ideal well, let me just clarify this straight away the ideal from like the training i've been doing which is double threshold training is to be testing by lact a lactate monitor simple as that there's no other or better option to do heart rate is just something that is a, a is a, a statistic that i can get that's provided that shows me how hard my body's working but there are too many variables with heart rate like am i feeling under the weather like am i tired like how warm it is or cold it is uh, loads of things can affect heart rate and you'll see that now so i've got three examples four including today's session let's roll into them throw the data on screen now for session one this is the very first session i did double threshold five by six minutes april 27th you can see the paces were hot they were decent i remember at the time saying i'm not sure if i've overcooked this, this is my very first one i think i need to dial this back but actually if you look at the heart rates just make a note of these heart rates because they're not too bad considering some of the examples i'm about to show you now the goal that i always had with this was to start 
in the 150s for an average heart rate and finished mid 160s. Uh, the average, I never really wanted the max to go above 170. Well, you can see in the last one it did. I don't want to be getting anywhere near. This is a sub threshold effort. Um, so realistically, I don't want to really be going above 168 ever. Uh, and that's my goal eventually when I'm super fit with these is to really keep the heart rate much lower. So some decent stats to be fair on the first one. Roll forward to the fourth one, May the 18th. Uh, you'll see slower paces. So that's at the point when after that first one, I went, right, no, let's dial it back. Let's just kind of, I remember two, three, four were kind of much calmer. Uh, dial the paces back uh, much closer to what my goal marathon pace would be thinking that you know hopefully things will be better and uh, overall I had better an average better heart rate I think it was 160 or 161 average for the whole session which is good but you'll see on the fifth rep my max heart rate did creep into the 170s again but overall I had two averaging in the 150s which is ideal that's what I you know that's what I want the more in the 150s the better and the, and the max really didn't get, wow, well, 166 for three and four is decent, isn't it? I think that's pretty good. That's where I wanted five to stay. Obviously it didn't. Now what you have to bear in mind with these reps I do is one, three and five are slightly downhill to, um, one, three and five are slightly uphill two and four are slightly downhill. So one, three and five do have a kick up at the end. Uh, so I think that's where by the fifth one, when I'm kicking up that last hill, I think my, my heart rate spikes a bit. Roll forward to the sixth one. This is interesting. Paces matching or very similar to the very first session. So I've managed to dial it back. Uh, to, uh, to to get in those faster paces, feeling smooth, feeling... Now, just as a side note, I don't check heart rate when I'm running. I'm always doing this by feel, so it felt really smooth that day. But look at the heart rate. Heart rate was a little bit higher again. Now, I remember this warmer weather, just like today's session, much warmer weather as we're creeping into June, because this was done in June the 1st. I remember this one thinking, God, I was sweating buckets in the warm-up. So this, naturally, here we, here we go. Weather's affecting the heart rate here. But overall, I felt good, I felt smooth. First one averaged in the 150s, but then the rest were 160s. Way too high max there, 176. That was way too high, and that's nowhere near where I want to be touching. But I think, again, the average for this session was like 164, 165. So a little bit higher than I wanted, but good paces, felt smooth. But again, weather, other elements playing effect with the heart rate. Who knows? Who knows? I did say this is the most unscientific video you'll find. And then today, heart rate was just absolutely through the roof. Uh, the first one was great, like the lowest first average of all of them. So felt smooth kicking into it. But as soon as that first one was done, you can see the heart rate's absolutely shot up. 178 max on that third rep. Uh, and again, remember that's going uphill. And the fifth one, 176. Look at those averages, 167, 170, 168, 171, just way too high. So but the paces were relatively decent. If you look at uh, the examples that I showed you, I've ranged from the mid to low 140s to the mid low 150s. And this kind of sits slap bang in the middle. So in terms of how I felt, I felt good. I felt smooth. In terms of the paces, they were solid after having a week off. In terms of the heart rate, it was too high, but it is really hot today. Right now, when I'm about to kick off my second session, it's 22 degrees. So for us here in the UK, that's quite high. It's a bit of a heat wave here. It's going to get higher as the week progresses. So I've got to say, the weather has played a factor in those second, third and fourth example you saw. But overall, how much fitness have I lost? I don't really think I've lost that much fitness at all. I'm just what I would call a little bit rusty. And I think I'll find that if it cools down a bit next week and I get the sessions done, I reckon my heart rate might be back down to where it was with better paces. Time will tell. We'll have to see. Subscribe to the channel to find out how next week goes. But I just thought it would be an interesting video to share. It's a question we all ask. It's a question we all, some of us worry about. How much fitness do you lose? I've been running enough now to not worry about this sort of stuff. But it's a question I get asked a lot. I'm injured. How much fitness? I'm going to lose uh, for being off for a week, two weeks, three weeks. And I genuinely think a week is neg negligible. I think in terms of losing fitness, you might be talking such a tiny bit. I'd actually probably class it as more as just feeling a bit rusty. But I'd love to know your thoughts. How do you feel about, like, do you collect data like this? And do you ever examine it and study it? And what are your thoughts on losing fitness after a week? I think for me, it comes on the 10 to 14 day mark when you really do start to notice a bit of a difference. And then it takes two to three weeks to get things back. My injury at the beginning of the year took a bit longer to get back into it. But I think now it's really going to take just a few runs and I'll be back to where I was. So I appreciate your support in this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I'm off for my second session. going to film this one as well. So that'll be the next video out. Can't wait to share that one with you. If you enjoyed today, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.